We welcome you back to CBS Mornings. We've got new reporting in our investigation of veterans who were discharged because of their sexuality and are struggling to clear their records. From World War II until the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell back in 2010, an estimated 100,000 LGBTQ plus service members were kicked out of the military. While many walked away with less than honorable discharges, some faced even harsher consequences. Chief investigative correspondent, that would be Jim Axelrod, joins us at the table with more on this story. These stories are hard to believe to me. Good morning to see you, Jim. This one's going to get even harder. Good morning. We've been profiling veterans still paying the price for a policy that is no longer the law of the land. Denied certain benefits, unable to pursue certain jobs. But few have paid a more severe price than the vet you're about to meet. The military didn't just boot him for being gay. The military put him in prison. At Seattle First Baptist Church, where the Seattle Men's Chorus is rehearsing for its Pride concert, perhaps the only thing matching the power of the singing voices are the stories shared with the spoken ones. As my sexual identity blossomed, I battled with how to live the covert double life that was required of LGBTQ military members at that time. Like the story of Steve Morose and his time as an Air Force officer in the late 1980s when gay men and women could not serve openly. It all came crashing down in 1990 when an investigation into an enlisted friend led to my being court-martialed for conduct on becoming an officer. The son of an Air Force Master Sergeant, Morose had an excellent record until the Air Force discovered he was gay and charged him with three counts of consensual sodomy and two for conduct on becoming an officer. You were looking at 17 years in prison. I was, five years per sodomy charge and a year per conduct on becoming charge. For living your truth. For being me. Huh? It wasn't uncommon then for gay service members to be court-martialed and thrown out of the military. So Morose pleaded guilty, but the judge had other ideas. So when he came back in and sat down and said his decision was 24 months of confinement, my heart sank. Because again, I thought my military life was over, but in that moment, I thought my life was over. And was sentenced to two years at Fort Leavenworth. Can you describe Leavenworth to me? I mean, I did get to know people that were there for life, um, who for rape, for murder. Was it a tough place? It's a prison. Was the military justice system used to punish gay and lesbian members of the military for their sexuality? A hundred percent. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Rachel Van Landingham is a law professor who served 24 years in the Air Force. Is Steve Morose's case unique? There are thousands that have been incarcerated for their sexuality. A six-month CBS News investigation found the military used a range of cover charges to target gay and lesbian service members for their sexuality before and even during Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Article 125 directly criminalized unnatural copulation, but other statutes included conduct unbecoming, indecent acts, and making false official statements. The numbers are very difficult to actually ascertain because there were so many alternative ways to involuntarily separate an individual from the military without putting on paper that you were doing so because of their sexual orientation. Does the United States military know just how many people have been imprisoned for their sexuality? No, because they don't want to know. But could they figure this out? Yes, if they cared enough, they could go through the records. Decades after his release from Fort Leavenworth, Steve Morose is still paying the price. I wasn't able to become a police dispatcher. Why couldn't you be a police dispatcher? Because I have a record. Because I have an FBI file. Because you're a felon? Correct. Have you ever thought, I want my record cleared. I want my discharge upgraded. I want access to my benefits. I have, and I didn't pursue it, partly because I had heard how hard it was. How difficult is it for someone like Steve to have his conviction overturned? It's way more difficult than it should be. It should be incredibly easy. But Morose 
and an untold number of other veterans are still waiting for the Pentagon to make things right. They have the ability to do a retroactive look and say people who are hanging under the weight of something that is no longer valid should be made whole. What could be bigger than restoring someone's humanity? A sense of justice to somebody's life. Especially if you're that person, nothing. In a statement to CBS News, a Defense Department spokesperson said, as they always do, it would be inappropriate to comment on a specific case, adding the department cannot legally, quote, set aside a conviction once appellate review is complete. The spokesperson also encouraged veterans who believe they were wrongfully discharged to reach out to the applicable review board to determine their eligibility for relief. That I will tell you mm -hmm. what the Pentagon continues to do is decline our request to sit down and answer some questions about what is a fundamentally broken yes, process. Yes, but I like how you phrase it, as they always do. We cannot comment at this time. But if the Pentagon can't do anything to overturn this, who can? Well, we asked Rachel Van Landingham that question, the expert we just heard from. And because what Steve Morose and other veterans have been told to seek a presidential pardon, and Van Landingham just laughed, said they ought, to, they ought to buy some lottery tickets while they're at it. They got a better chance of winning the lottery than getting a presidential Boy, pardon. And then, of course, wow. the question is, uh, is it lingering homophobia uh, or is it uh, just bureaucratic right. inefficiency? Well, you know what's never been done? There's never been a formal apology issued, not to this point, so we could start there. So it's like a it, great start. So is the military doing anything to address this now? I wish I, mean, I knew. I wish yeah. I could tell you, but that would require them answering some questions. Well, Jim, I'll tell you what, um, doing stories like this yes. will help yeah. apply pressure in areas yes, that yes, need yes. it. Appreciate you.